I'm going to string this racket with two pieces of string. But before I start, I want to point out something. Right here is where the sixth vein comes around and goes up. And the seventh vein comes down right here. And the, excuse me, goes up right here. And then the eighth vein comes out here and ties off right here. A lot of times when you take the string that goes from the sixth main to the seventh main, and from the eighth main to the seventh main, depending on how the string is stacked inside of this grommet, it could be below the seventh main or above the seventh main. And when that happens, the string that goes from the sixth main to the seventh main would be opposite the string that goes from the eighth main to the seventh main. What I mean by that is this string over here might be low and this string might be high. So when you run the next to the last cross, normally it'll try to come out either above or below the string that went from the eighth to the seventh main and it'll want to do exactly the opposite when the string goes from the 6th to the 7th main. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to stack my strings so that both of these strings, the one going from the 6th to the 7th and the 8th to the 7th, is in either a low position or a high position. All right, I said at the beginning I was going to use two different pieces of string, but I kind of sort of lied. I'm, not, I'm going to use two different pieces of string, but as for right now, I just have one. And the reason I do that is so that I can use what I cut off the long side, which is over here on this side, to string all my crosses. Let me get into stacking these strings between the 6th and 7th main in between the 8th and 7th main. I'm going to tie off the 19th cross down here at grommet hole 6th throat. So I want the string that goes in this channel from the 6th to the 7th main down low. So I've taken a, an awl and I've put it in the 7th grommet hole above the string that goes from the 6th to the 7th main. Now I'm going to tension the seventh main. Now I'm going to tension the eighth main. Now what I want to do is I've got a, a great big long tail here because this is what I'm going to use to string all my crosses with. And I want to get this tail tied off and cut so that I can start stringing my crosses. Right now, I've ran this in on purpose so that the tail right here that I'm tying off on this eighth main is above this seventh grommet. So now, if it's above it here, and I go under it like this, and pull this string around, it'll be below that string. So I'm just going to go on and pull it through. And I can pull it around. Now it's below it. So now this, this string right here is doing the same thing that this awl did up here. I can move the awl if I want and put it in this string before I tie off. But there's no real need to. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tie my knot. And before I cinch this knot up, I'm going to use this end of my string to run in the top three crosses. The first string I'm going to start with is going to be the third cross. The third cross, being odd, will be ran in the same way as the 19th cross, which is odd. I want 
my anchor string to be on top of the intersecting string when I uh, tie off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to weave this string so that I go under this sixth main. Then I can go on and weave my top three crosses. On the short side now, I'm going to do just the opposite. I want my strings to be in the top of the channel so I can go in below those strings. So I'm going to put my awl in the grommet hole below my string that goes from the 6th to the 7th main. When I get down to the bottom now, this time instead of wanting my string to go under this main, I want it to go over. So it forces this string on the outside of this channel here to be in the top portion of that channel. So since I want it to go over, I'm going to, I've got this string cut at a slight angle and I want it angled up so that when I stick it in there, the string actually goes above that seventh main and it did. So now I can just go on and tie it off. Okay, this is my long side again now. And what I want to do is I've got the strings over here on the outside. I want to go above the string that goes from the eighth to the seventh and go across on my next to the last uh, cross string. And when I come back, I also want to be above the string that goes from the 6th to the 7th main. So I've got a point cut on my string here, and I'm just going to stick it in there. If I've got any problem, I could easily take my uh, awl and open up the path to get through there, but usually I don't even need the awl. When I get to the other side now, I want to go below the string that goes from the 8th to the 7th main and below the string that goes from the 6th to the 7th main. So now what I want to do is I want to angle my point so that it's pointing downward and push it through there. That one came out on the right side too. Again, I want to be below the string that goes from the 6th to the 7th main. So I look at my point and then weave my bottom cross. Over here now, I want to be above the string that goes from the 6th to the 7th main. So I want my point angled upward. When I tie off the 19th cross now, my anchor string, which is the 6th main, is on top of the intersecting string. So I don't have to try to tie my knot down here in the small area. I can tie my knot up here in the larger area. And when I cinch up the knot, it'll slide right over the top of that intersecting string. Let me show you what I ended up with. This is the long side, or the side where I tied off uh, the bottom cross. To begin with, the 17th cross comes out right here and goes down to the 18th cross, and when it goes into this grommet right here, it goes in above the string that went from the 8th to the 7th main. I weave the 18th cross, I come back on the 19th cross, it comes out above the string that goes from the 6th to the 7th main, and whoops, and ties off in this grommet right here. And Because that string that goes from the 6th to the 7th main is in the bottom of that channel, my string here that I tie off, the knot tends to stay above this string, so therefore I don't have an overlap here where the string comes out, 
goes over that string and ties off. If I look at the opposite side of the racket, my 17th cross comes in here, goes across to the uh, long side, it comes back out, and it comes out above the string that goes from the 8th to the 7th main, because now I've got the racket upside down. I actually had it coming out below it. So now it goes in on the 19th cross above the string that went from the 6th to the 7th main. Then it comes back across the racket to tie off. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you got any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section down below. And I'll try to respond to them as quick as I can. Have a nice day.